Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chanel and recently I have gotten so many questions about living in Buenos Aires and just Buenos Aires in general and I figured I would sit down today and chat with you all just about my thoughts and my experiences of living in Buenos Aires. If you're thinking about moving to Buenos Aires or Argentina in general or just vacationing there, I hope that this video helps you. One of the biggest questions that I got was about safety and as a woman, I traveled Argentina and Buenos Aires alone so much. I traveled all all across the country. I spent so many nights alone walking the streets at night. I took planes, I took buses at night alone. I walked early in the morning. I went to like clubs and different things like that, even alone without being with other people that I knew. And I took Ubers at night alone. And I say all of this to let you know that I always felt safe no matter what I did. I never felt that my life was in danger. I never felt that the place was really sketchy. I just always very much felt safe being alone. And I cannot say that about every city that I've been to ever, but I can say that with certainty about Buenos Aires. So if safety is a concern of yours, especially if you're a woman traveling to Buenos Aires and maybe even living there, I would just like you to know it is one of the safest cities that I have ever been to ever and I think that's one of the things that I love most about it truthfully the worst that could probably happen to you is that someone is going to pickpocket you but when you put that into perspective you could get pickpocketed like just about anywhere so just be smart with what you're doing i see so many people specifically foreigners out there who are like using their phone recording everything taking photos like not being mindful of their wallet like showing their money out and just don't do that like you can definitely record things take photos but like have both of your hands on the camera if you have a wallet or personal belongings always make sure that they are in your front pocket never your back pocket especially if you have a coat or something never leave them within your coat you always want to make sure that they are in your front pocket or on an inner pocket of your coat let's say if you're using a coat just be smart mindful and cautious of your surroundings like just please do not be dumb and if you just keep that in mind you will have such a good time in Buenos Aires and you will not feel like your safety is in jeopardy at all and since I kind of did just talk about Airbnbs and I just talked about like studios and things like that I figured I would go ahead and talk about how I found the place that I lived in for so long and truthfully I lived in three different places and it was really easy finding each one of those places so before I even booked my plane tickets I went and looked on Airbnb because Airbnb is the most comfortable thing for me and I looked up just generally some prices on Airbnb for one bedroom or for studios and they were all around like 500 ish US dollars and for me that's a really good price for the month but for the people who live in Argentina they're like wow that's an insane amount of money for you to pay but for me I was okay with paying it and I booked the Airbnb so that way I had a place to go right when I arrived and I was fine with that because I trust Airbnb and everything was very secure and I picked the one that wouldn't have me pay or have to meet someone at the check-in because I was getting checked in at like 1 a.m and I didn't want to have to pay extra to like meet someone the day before or something like that. After staying in Argentina for a little bit I was like okay I'm done with this Airbnb and I need to find a new place to live what i actually did was i went on reddit and i went on r slash buenos aires and there are so many whatsapp groups in there and i became a part of like a few different whatsapp groups one of them was a rentals group and basically people in argentina were showing rentals that they had the price and things like that and what was offered in it and i found my next place through that whatsapp group and i was very thankful for it because the guy who ended up being my landlord for a little bit he was so incredibly nice he gave me a little walkthrough around the area um i was able to pay in cash like he didn't charge me extra it was like really really nice and I appreciated how nice he was and just like being in the whatsapp group like people are generally nice but something else you could do as well if you're already staying in Argentina and you're looking for a place to move I would recommend this for people who are already in Argentina not so much for people who are going to Argentina for the first time but there is this website called Zonaprop and it has a bunch of rentals online that you can look at and they are a bit more cheap and a bit more affordable than the ones you may find on Airbnb but the thing about Zonaprop, it's that they highly recommend that you visit the place or the unit in person first, but you can like pay this extra fee to make sure like you get it and nothing goes wrong, which is like a little bit sketch to me. But 
overall the prices are much more affordable and people really do have nice things to say about Zona Prop. I've just never used it, but I'm definitely planning on using it in the future because I would love to find a place at a cheaper price. And a lot of people really do recommend that you don't use Airbnb because it overcharges you and like they're just basically tourist hunting to make sure that the people who are the landowners get a better price. But truthfully, in my honest opinion, if you're okay with paying a little bit more money um, for that security and for everything to be stable because Airbnb is such a well-known company, I would suggest to just go ahead and pay the extra money it's nothing wrong with that. I know that people in Argentina are just very surprised at the prices that foreigners pay, but if you have the money and you want an Airbnb, definitely go for it and don't let anyone like persuade you not to. Just know that there are other options as well and Airbnb is not your only option. The next question that I got is a little bit interesting, but it's like, how do you practice Spanish or how can you brush up on your Spanish and Spanish classes and just in that general region of topic? And for me, I didn't really go down to Argentina and thinking that I needed to practice Spanish a lot because I did study Spanish in college. So I felt very comfortable with my Spanish. However, I wanted to go down there and I wanted to take Spanish classes because I just love education and I love being a student and I just really do respect that. So I wanted the cheapest option but the best bang for my buck. But after looking for a few days, I ended up finding this school that's called Vamos Academy. And the price that I paid was $125 for five days. And for each day, there was four hours of instruction. So in total, it was like 20 hours of instruction per week of Spanish learning for $125, which for me is such a steal, but not only do they offer Spanish classes, um, the class sizes are very small. It's a very one-on-one -on -one type of connection. Like in my class, there were only two other people. I think it's a minimum class size of two up to a maximum of six. And I really respect and value that. But they also do a bunch of cultural excursions as well after school. And I always participated in them as much as I could because I loved it. And I just loved knowing more about Argentina, talking to people who lived there. They always brought us to cool restaurants and museums. And there was like tango and salsa class classes at night and I loved it and those extra things at the end of the school day were free and if you're looking for a place to just like brush up on your Spanish or to learn Spanish I would recommend Vamos Academy because they are really just a great company filled with great people and it's a really good price too. Plus, I made some of my best friends while being there, and I just highly recommend it. And this all involved kind of going to different Spanish cultural excursions or just language excursions, actually. And one of them was called Spanglish, and that was on Saturdays. And if I remember the place, I'm going to go ahead and try to put it here. But that was really cool. You paid like 800 pesos, and for like two-ish hours, um, you would talk with people in Spanish and English for the whole night. And I made really good friends there, too. Another one is called Mundo Lingo. Literally just go to Google and type up Mundo Lingo and you will get all the information that you need. Um, it's kind of late at night. It's like at nine o'clock and it goes to like basically two in the morning if you want to stay that long, but you don't have to stay up that long. And I, again, made some really nice friends through there too. Another one is called Mate Club. This one was a little bit harder for me to find because I saw this online before going to Buenos Aires and then like once I tried to go to the event it was like kind of difficult for me to do that. One of my friends that I made at a separate language learning event told me about Mate Club and I'm like finally because I've been trying to do this Mate Club for like three weeks now so thank you for this information. But I really love Mate Club too. Again if I can remember that information I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. But you could also just look on apps as well. There's this app and I talked about this in a previous video that I had. It's called Hello Talk. And I use this app and I made one of like my best friends ever on that app. And you can basically just speak with people in any, any language that you'd like. And they respond to you in any language that works for the best for both of you. And it's a little bit weird using the app like at first because you have so many conversations with people and some of the conversations just end up being dead and going nowhere. But there are pretty good conversations out there and there's really good people out there who just want to improve their Spanish and just language in general. So I would highly recommend that you download that app if you're thinking about brushing up on your Spanish specifically before you go down to Buenos Aires or even while you're down there. And another big question I got was about the blue rate and basically the blue rate is just doubling your money as a foreigner. So if you come from a country that's either the US or a country that uses the Euro, you are in luck because your money will double or maybe even triple down in Buenos Aires 
it is. And the big question I always get is, but how did you get your money to double or triple down there? And from my own personal experience, I used Western Union and I never used Western Union prior to going down to Buenos Aires. And it was really confusing to me. And I feel like the videos I saw online did not explain well about what I had to do. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through it. If you are new to the Blue Rate or Western Union, if you know about this, just go ahead and bypass this part. But if you're really confused and if you've done a lot of research or you're just really interested about the Blue Rate and learning more, let me go ahead and help you out. Basically, what I suggest that you do before you go down to Buenos Aires is to download Western Union. It's an app. You can download it for free on your phone, regardless if you have like an Apple or Android, and set up your Western Union account before you even go down to Buenos Aires. It's just going to ask you personal information like your phone number, your name, and things like that. And once you go down to Buenos Aires, basically what you can do then is make a transfer. So I always transferred money from the U.S. because I'm from the U.S. to Argentina money. And mostly what I did was transfer like 500 ish dollars at a time. And that was sufficient enough for me. Some people really do transfer like thousands of dollars, which I don't recommend because the blue rate always fluctuates. Like some days are better to do the transfer because you may get more money and other days you may not want to do it. So I would just recommend to just do what you need maybe for like a week or two at a time. And then go ahead, you're gonna to need to go to a Western Union. And there are so many Western Unions in Argentina. So I would say, don't worry about not being able to find a Western Union, just search one up the closest place to where you're staying. And once you go to Western Union, you're going to need your passport on you. And basically you're gonna go up to them and say, hey, I made a transfer with Western Union. And they're gonna ask you for your passport and then they're gonna give you the money. But some things to be mindful of when using Western Union are Western Unions can have really long lines. So if you want to go to a Western Union, I would suggest you go like right when they open. Sometimes it's like eight, nine or 10, depending on the Western Union you go to in a day. And another thing I would recommend would be that you have something to like hold your money in because some Western Unions like may give you like thousand dollar pesos and maybe you'll get like 50 pesos or 51,000 pesos and other Western Unions may only have let's say 100 pesos so you may leave with like a wad of cash and you want to make sure you have something to like carry all that money in but also please do not be dumb once you get this money because I have seen far too many people leave a Western Union and they go to the street and they just like start counting their money please do not do that I cannot even believe that I have to put that into words because people literally will count their wad of cash of like let's say a thousand US dollars in pesos on the street of Buenos Aires please do not do that because you are setting yourself up to get robbed I'm sorry I'm just gonna put it out there just don't do that. Please be smart when you go and to any Western unions, be smart of your surroundings. Um, be mindful, just be mindful as you would if you were taking a whole bunch of money out from your bank and maybe you had to walk home. Like how mindful would you be? Be just as mindful, if not more, when using the Western unions and Buenos Aires. But there are so many pros about living in Buenos Aires. One of them, outside of it being the cost of living and the safeness, like the food is so darn good i cannot express how good the food is the empanadas are fantastic i really do love the pizza it was kind of a culture shock for me though because they do eat the pizza with a fork and a knife and i don't know why i just did that like i'm playing the violin but that was a little bit different for me especially coming from new york where the pizza is so good but i could not complain about the pizza in buenos aires um parilla which is basically like a barbecue type thing and i know i'm not doing that explanation justice I truthfully didn't like that, but a lot of people do like it and it's a very much part of their culture. So I would recommend that you try that. Basically a big pro is the food because the food is so good. And especially if you're coming from a country that uses the US dollar or a Euro, you're in for a really good time because your money goes a really long way. Another pro I have would be that the people down there are literally some of the kindest people you will ever meet in your whole entire life ever and I say that with 100% certainty again I have traveled to so many countries and different regions around the world and I have never been treated so kindly as I have been in Buenos Aires as a foreigner and I am kind of confident in my Spanish abilities I know I'm not perfect and I know I still have a lot of room to grow but like even with like the language barrier there 
um, they were always very mindful as long as I was trying and as long as other people were trying. So if you do know a little bit of Spanish, don't be afraid to use your Spanish. Don't be afraid to make errors. Just do your best because they are always really kind and accommodating, um, even with that language barrier there as well. Another pro that I personally don't have just because that lifestyle isn't for me, but a big pro if you are interested in like going out at night and partying and things like that that culture is really good for you because the parties start pretty late and they go to like really early in the morning like seven or so o'clock and if you are into that i would definitely say that you're in for a good time because there are so many different clubs out there and again the people are really kind and accommodating so if you like doing that you're in for a really good time and i know i just said really good time like five times but I cannot think of a different word right now. Another big pro about the city was how clean it was. And coming from like New York City where the subway station is really gross, it's always overpopulated. It has so much litter, not just in the subway station, but rather like in the city streets and just the streets in general. Buenos Aires, it's so clean and it's very refreshing like to just not see loads of litter on the ground. There are so many garbages and people actually use the garbage as well. And another thing that I really like about it, it's the architecture, of course. Like a lot of people say when you're walking in Buenos Aires, it kind of feels like you're in like a European city. And I kind of didn't understand that before I went down there, but now being in Argentina, I'm like, whoa, like it really gives like such a weird, not weird, but European type feel. And I say it's weird because like you're in Latin America, but it has like a European perspective which makes sense considering the history of Argentina but if you are looking for a nice clean modern architectural beautiful city you are in for a treat because Argentina gives you just that and I have truthfully been trying to think of some cons about Argentina and I'm trying so hard to think of one and it's really difficult because I only have positive things to say about Argentina but one of the things that took me by surprise was how expensive their clothes are coming from a foreigner so if you go down there thinking that you can just buy clothes for different seasons you definitely can but you're just going to pay a little bit more so just be aware of that and the humidity I would say it's definitely a con because in the winter or in their winter it makes it feel so much more cold than it actually is and in the summer of course hot humid heat is not good but that's something that's very common there as well so the humidity is definitely a climate factor that I would keep in mind but I truthfully am trying to think so hard about other cons and I'm drawing a blank and I don't even want to say comment down below your cons for Buenos Aires because that would defeat the purpose of this video but if there is something that I'm missing that you think that it would be important for another person to know comment that down below because truthfully I only have good things to say about Buenos Aires and Argentina in general and I know I'm only coming from one subjective perspective so if you have a different experience to share just some extra tips or advice please share those because the more the merrier and I have received some really awesome comments on my past videos that I really appreciated a lot because it put things more in perspective for me and for other people who watch these videos as well. So I am going to go ahead and wrap up the video right here. If you enjoyed watching this video or if you found it helpful, I would very much appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to my channel for future updates just like this one.